Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's happening in TV and movies? Well, I'm glad you asked. Have you seen the new Bill and Ted movie? I have indeed seen the new Bill and Ted movie, and it was most excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> that was the best possible response, and I just wasn't ready for it. Okay. Well, what would you give it? It, it was a solid movie. Um, it wasn't great. It's it's a Bill and Ted movie. Okay. Uh, I'd probably give it like a 7.5. It's fun. It's just dumb fun. It's optimistic. And uh, in this day of age, just like a dumb, fun, optimistic movie. What if I told you you scored it lower than Rotten Tomatoes did? Well, that's, that's okay. I, I'd be pretty surprised. It, it actually got 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. And I mean, it is doing well. Um People are streaming at left, right, and center. Forbes thinks it's going to make up around thirty million. Yeah, I, I, um, I could see that. Uh, you know, it's they have this thing where it can it never hit theaters except yeah. for I think in a very limited release. So uh, I mean, there's to rent it. It's still like twenty bucks, I think. So they're still going to get like those theater prices coming in. Yeah, you can rent it for the t- for twenty bucks, or you can purchase it for thirty five. And that's really not too bad. I mean, especially for a, a brand new movie that we've been waiting for for how long? <laughs> uh, thirty years, literally <laughs> thirty years. Yeah. So that's that's not bad. <laughs> no, no, for sure. But uh, have you ever heard of Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis is one of my favorite actors. I regret to inform you that he made a movie recently that isn't doing so well. Oh my goodness, what's that? (laughs) Yeah, it's called uh, Hard Kill. Yeah. A creative name, I know. It's actually got uh, 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oof. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm kind of a fan of crappy movies, though. Did you ever watch The Room? Uh, Yes, I have. (laughs) I've seen The Room, and I've seen various iterations of The Room. Yeah, if you can watch The Room... You can watch anything. <laughs> so I honestly recommend it, but uh, the production notes indicate that it was filmed in 10 days. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So tight oh. budget type thing. I, I mean, Bruce is, uh, he's mostly known for as like a B-movie actor anyway. Yeah. He started off at doing the Evil Dead back in, uh, I think it was like 79. And then Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness is what he's no- mostly known for. Uh, he's a great physical actor. He does yeah. some great physical comedy. Uh, watching him in Army of Darkness, uh, like he flips himself and all sorts of stuff. So um, it's good to know he's still acting, though. Yeah, he's still acting. Um, yeah, the movie comes in at 95 minutes. So, I mean, it's it's definitely not going to be the worst movie you've watched all year. <laughs> but um, Snoop Dogg. Yes, what about Snoop? He's got a movie coming out. Yeah. It's actually already out. Okay. Um. It's called Unbelievable with five exclamation points following that. Oh, that's that's the important <laughs> part, the five exclamation marks. Yeah, I feel like for every exclamation mark they added to the title, it uh, dropped in quality. <laughs> <laughs> it's got an IMD score of 53. Oof. Yeah, most of the ratings are pretty low. <laughs> yeah. And for a 110-minute movie, it kind of makes me a little apprehensive to watch it. But it's Snoop Dogg trying to take over the world with weeds. That sounds like a, a Snoop Dogg plot. If, if I were to watch a movie about Snoop Dogg, I would expect that to be the plot. Yeah, he's actually the villain, it looks like. And uh, two ASSs, ast- um, Aeronautical Space System Comrades, um, the fate of their lives are on the line in this movie. But it, it looks kind of uh, janky, actually. It's yeah. kind of got a live action crossed with puppets, and it looks like he wanted to. He was very inspired <laughs> by Team America. Okay. <laughs> for better or for worse. There's, well, I mean, the more you tell me about it, the more I just want to see it for the kind of plain insanity. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, but uh, today, as we're filming this, it's September the 1st. And uh, on, on this day today, a movie uh, was released in the 90s. In fact, it was released in 1991. That movie was called Amiga World Animation Video Vo- Volume 2. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, kind of an obscure film. But, uh, I mean, if you're into demo scene stuff or computer-generated graphics... Yeah, I was going to say, you said Amiga, and that r- literally brought me back to the days of the Commodore 64. Yeah! Um... A lot of uh, in that time, a lot of people would program 
video effect. So they would get in there and they'd script it up and out would pop an animation, which I thought is, was really impressive. It's kind of a compilation video, and it was produced by many different people in the Amiga community, and some of those people were actually industry professionals at the time. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube for free, so go check that out. And that's all I've got for now, and we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, Welcome back to Media Minute, your headlines and quick times. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to you a little bit about video games. Before I do that, though, I was talking about Bruce Campbell. I meant Bruce Campbell. Okay? We good? We good. Okay. <laughs> we good. All right. Uh, yeah, video games. Uh, quite a few releases. Nothing too, too big uh, for now. Uh, we have uh, Captain Tubasa, Rise of the New Champions, coming out from uh, Tamsa for PC, uh, PS4, and Switch. It's an arcade-style football, a.k.a. soccer game, okay. based on the uh, manga and anime series of the same name. And, of course, since it is a manga-slash-anime-type video game, it's got all those cool effects where someone does a kick and time slows down and they call out their attacks and all that so yeah sports and manga has always i've always been a big fan of them because they're so dramatic yeah for sure it takes them like 10 episodes to get through a single basketball game in some <laughs> instances uh this one uh, also features uh, multiplayer and co-op gameplay uh seven point uh not seven point but 71 for its uh, current metacritic score so it's doing okay i think if you're a soccer fan if you're looking for something that's not kind of in the realistic realm that might be the game for you and we have a competitor now for pokemon no way yep. who could possibly compete with pokemon well we have nexomon colon extinction by, by VWOW Entertainment coming out for PS4, PC, Xbox, and Switch. It's a monster-catching RPG in the vein of Pokemon. Okay. They have 300 unique monsters to trap and train. Well, they're they're trying to compete. 300 isn't anything to sneeze at. Well, it's double the original Pokemon count of 151. They have uh, unique capture mechanics. There's like a little mini game now for uh, capturing these monsters. And it's doing okay. 76 on Metacritic. Huh. And, uh, well, this one. Really inspired by Zelda. Uh, Windbound. It's coming out for all major platforms by Five Live Studios. It's kind of a mashup of Zelda Wind Waker and survival games. Okay, so it's got the cartoon-like graphics? Yeah, it's got that uh, cell shaded type graphic, and it's kind of a mashup, like I said, between like Zelda and like Minecraft. Wow. Uh, yeah, you explore and survive as you travel between procedurally generated islands. You scavenge to upgrade your weapons and your boat, and uh, it's doing okay. 66 on, on Metacritic. You you... I can get behind that, because the only thing... I had against Minecraft was it was a little too unfocused for me. I, I kind of really craved some sort of goal. I mean, I realized that you could go kill the Ender Dragon, but it's not necessarily um, advertised, especially yeah. back when I was playing it. This one has like a story that you follow along, and uh, if there's two settings, uh, there's one that if you die, you'll keep your story setting and like your your survival stuff, and then there's another kind of hardcore more which. Kicks you back to the first uh, chapter if you uh, if you die. Nice. I'm all about the hardcore mode. Ever since Diablo. <laughs> and uh, have you ever played Life is Strange? I actually haven't yet. Okay. Well, uh, the studio, Don't Nod Entertainment, has released a new game in that vein called uh, Tell Me Why. And this one uh, might feel kind of familiar because it's a narrative adventure game set in small town Alaska, which we're wow. pretty 
we're on the Alaska Highway. So, you know, it, it, it's local-ish, I guess. Uh, it's got a similar vibe to uh, Life is Strange, a.k.a. Your Best Friend Keeps Dying Simulator. You take <laughs> control of uh, twins who use their special bonds to unravel mysteries, and uh, you explore the twins' childhood memories, and there's kind of a, like a... Uh, a fantastical element to it. Uh, like Life is Strange had this mechanic where you could look at photographs and go back in time. This one, you explore the twins' memory because they have some sort of special connection. And uh, yeah, you talk to townsfolk to put together clues about your childhood. Uh, doing pretty good 78 on Metacritic. 78. I feel like anything that's in the 70 or 7 out of 10 range is definitely worth a look. Yeah, you're always going to get, uh, you know, decent scores, and then you're going to get people who hate whatever. Uh, the genre is so you know I think uh, 75 and up is considered good on Metacritic now this one this one um, is is kind of neat uh, I actually kickstarted this one okay uh, Iron Harvest coming out for the PS4 uh, Xbox One wait so and, you're saying you kickstarted it and it's coming out and it's coming out yes amazing amazing round of applause yeah and uh, coming out for PC, it's a real-time strategy game set in an alternate 1920s. Now, here's the hook. Okay. Giant diesel punk mechs. Okay, see, that's cool. Yeah, so, yeah, they have the World War I kind of aesthetic to it, but they have these giant mechs for uh, all the factions. Uh, yeah, you get to do that, and there's an epic single-player and co-op campaign, uh, multiplayer across six maps, and, I mean, this kind of... It's my type of game. Nice RTS. And any game that lets you have a giant mech with a bayonet and you get to do a bayonet charge with a giant mech, I think that's uh, that's kind of right up my alley. Doing 77 for Metacritic. No way, though. Just rolling coal right into the battlefield with a bayonet with a m- battle suit. <laughs> That's uh, well. That's why I, I kickstarted it. It looked it looked cool from the get go. I think it's been in development for like three years or something now. It's okay. one of those ones that I threw money at and then kind of forgot about. It. It's like, oh, it's out. Happy surprise! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now this one, this one uh, actually, it's got connections to uh, the eighties. It's got connections to Fallout Wasteland Three from In Exile Entertainment. Now, did you know that Fallout was based on the original Wasteland? I had no idea. Yeah, Wasteland came out in 1988, and it was a post-apocalyptic RPG. What was it on? It was on, like, Commodore 64, 386s. Yeah. So this is, uh, they did a Kickstarter about 10 years ago, I think, for Wasteland 2, and then they finally got around to doing Wasteland 3. You take control of a squad of desert rangers in turn-based combat, and your decisions have consequences to the story. There's all sorts of different branching paths. You get to take on corrupt. Yeah, you get to take on corruption, craze cultists, cutthroat gangs, and killer clowns. And uh, yeah, 86 on Metacritic. People are liking it. Wow, <laughs> that's the highest rated uh, game we've had so far, uh, except for Flight Simulator last week. True. Yeah. And that's it for me. Uh, thank you for watching Media Minute. Your Entertainment headlines in quick time. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. Make sure you hit that like button.